Now today we talk to you to the business of suffering losses. Well, there are businesses that are suffering losses for years and years together in the hope of making money one day. All big giants, including Uber, Ola, Amazon, Flipkart, have been suffering losses every year in the hope of making losses. But why are they making losses and what is the hope? Is there still a hope and still some kind of hope there? We will discuss today all these issues. But first, let's look at the fact Uber, the ride-hailing company, has lost $2.8 billion last year, excluding its China businesses. Well, according to newly released numbers, Uber has, uh, it's, has suffered sales growth well has remained strong even as it has entered tumultuous 2017 the financials are like this that uh, uber softpeg uh, back uh, ola and uber both have been posting losses and losses together so this is the whole story to talk more on this story we are uh, joined by jaraj mashru our uh, special the startup specialist uh, good evening mr mashru first of all we would like to know from your side what is this business of suffering losses we have seen Ola, Uber, Flipkart, all of them they suffer losses. Why do they do so? Why aren't they coming to profitability? Well, you know, actually, um, this is a common uh, stage that all startups go through if they are a platform-based startup. It's called a network effect. Uh, you need both parties to come through, right? Like in the case of Ola and Uber, you need the cab drivers as well as the customers and uh, you need to be constantly onboarding both of them. Only when you hit a tipping point uh, where you have enough customers booking uh, enough cabs frequently and, you, and, and also you have enough of the supply side, so you have enough cabs available for enough customers to book, uh, that's when you start seeing a, uh, a churn in, uh, in your assets and, and basically you know, your commissions will, will uh, outgrow your operating cost so that you will actually start making profit. So uh, in any in any platform based, even if you look at Amazon, Amazon is, a, is one of the world's oldest platforms, one of the world's largest platforms. They went almost 15 years without making profits. So it's it's not a it's not a uh, exceptional situation. This is a common phenomenon that occurs in network effects. I think the the trick that is required is especially in India um, is uh, you know cashback is not a strategy just giving discounts to customers to use your product or service is not a sustainable strategy it costs you a lot uh, already customer acquisition cost is very high in the digital space it's not easy or cheap to acquire new customers and if you start giving them discounts in order to lure them in then you're going to make bigger losses and uh, they the customers will have to spend a lot more time and money on your product and service until they become a profitable customer for you. So and this is something that I think Ola and Uber are doing uh, quite terribly in India. They've not quite understood how to fix this problem. And Mr. Bashru, help us understand this valuation game. There is some valuation game behind this overall business of losses as well. Flipkart keeps on suffering losses, but the valuation is now increasing, has increased tremendously since the day one. So what is this? business of valuation why eBay Ola Amazon they are uh, you know getting into this business of valuation why do they frequently keep on selling stakes and raising money uh, well that's a two-part question um, you know in uh, in uh, let me let me answer the first part first which is why does the valuation keep increasing even though they keep making losses uh, well that's really simple it's because the investors are expecting that at some point you will hit that network effect where you will have enough uh, people on both sides trading on your platform. And, uh, you know, uh, especially in India, when more and more people are entering the internet world, uh, there are, you know, more and more smartphone penetration, more internet penetration, even in the rural segment. So the market is largely untapped. So the potential is huge. Um, as long as the company can uh, give the investors confidence that they will survive long enough. Uh, in the market, that the the day they are profitable, that they will actually be in business. Um, that you know, that's the only uh, concern over there, which is which is relatively easy. So, investors are looking at a longer term potential of uh, you know making some huge hyper profits and returns uh, from these companies, and uh, and they're willing to take some losses in the meanwhile. Uh, the other half of your question, which is. Uh, you know why does uh, why do these companies go back and ask for more money? Well, it's simply because they've all they've constantly underestimated uh, 
how expensive it is going to be to to buy the customers right you if you start giving them discounts uh, to to get people to try your product and service and to continue using them then those discounts are going to eat into your operating margins and you're going to need to constantly go back to your investors and and you know get more money so you can get more customers at some point uh, you have to stop giving your cab drivers uh, ridiculous incentives just for operating the cab and you have to stop giving discounts to your customers just for using the cab uh, this game has to be played based on a value proposition right uh, if Ola and Uber are creating value for the customer and the cab driver, then there should not be a need for incentivizing them any beyond the value that you're offering. Uh, in other markets, this seems to be a little bit uh, more efficient and, and faster. I think in India, we're, we're still the first generation of e-commerce uh, consumers. And, uh, and I, I, I just like to you know, hope that somewhere down the road, near, uh, sooner rather than later, this problem is fixed. Mr. Bashru, one more thing that most of the startups of your unicorns in India are copy of the global unicorn. Flipkart yeah. is a copy of Amazon or eBay. Uh, now, mm. again, we can say that uh, Ola and Uber are copy of copy of each other. So they don't have any clear big idea which they are following. Then how long can they compete with global giants like, for example, Flipkart earn in, in rupees and burn rupees, while on the other hand, Amazon and eBay earn in US dollars or Europe uh, or a euro or pound and burn in rupees. So how long can they sustain? How long can Indian unicorns sustain against these global giants? You know, I think, um, I, I, you know, I come from the world of innovation. So my, my, uh, my professional obligation would be to say that copy, copying a international uh, competitor is not a, is not the best way to go. Uh, it may give you a little bit of uh, you know competitiveness in the market in the near term just because somebody you know like Ola has now launched um, uh, Ola Prime so you can uh, get these TV tablets inside your uh, uh, you know inside the cab and, and you can listen to music and watch videos inside the inside your Ola ca cab uh, that's great if Uber starts doing that in India just to compete with Ola temporarily it'll be okay but in the long run this needs to fit into your overall growth strategy. So just copying a feature of your competitor is not, uh, you know, in the long run, it's not a smart move to make. Um, but in the, you know, to your point where, you know, how can Indian startups or unicorns uh, compete uh, sustainably abroad? I think we have this huge advantage of um, not only uh, burning in rupees more than dollars, then so that's a currency advantage, but also we have this huge market from where we can source our customers as well as our talent uh, locally. We don't need to go abroad. We don't need H1 visas. We don't need to depend on others to grow our unicorns. So um, therein, but, but, but while that is an advantage, there is a challenge, which is, you know, the quality of talent that we get and, um, you know, the kind of, uh, the, the kind of global uh, talent that is required, uh, whether we are able to produce enough of that within the country. So. Uh, there's a lot of uh, Indian, right. uh, you know, students who had gone abroad to study. They have worked abroad, and they're now beginning to make their way back into India. I hope that they can find a place in the startup ecosystem and uh, and improve the the global competitiveness of our unicorns from that ang angle as well. Right, Mr. Bashu, thank you so much for talking to us and decoding in front of us the business of making losses while all these startups are still making losses as released by Uber and Ola recently. This is time for a short break on Beyond.